All right, hello everyone, and welcome to the very first session of Star Trek Dark Royal. Uh, Dark Royal is a tabletop role-playing game that is using the Star Trek Adventures rule set by Modifius Entertainment. If this is your first time seeing Star Trek Adventures or a tabletop role-playing game in general, don't worry, you'll figure it out pretty quickly. Uh, what sets this game apart from other Star Trek Adventures games is the fact that we are focusing not on a Starfleet ship and a Starfleet crew. Instead, we're focusing on an alien species instead. These aliens, the Cornet as I'm calling them, have already made a few cameos in McCall's Nighthawk and Cerberus games. We'll be running in the same universe and time as those two games, which is why you see some of the Nighthawk crew today in here in Discord. But more on that in a bit. Uh, all you really need to know is, again, that the Dark Oil is not a Starfleet ship and thus plays by different rules. And yes, the name Cornet is a deliberate nod to Warhammer 40k. Uh, before I get into the opening monologue, though, I do have to do just a tiny bit of shilling. Uh, right now, Twitch, Patreon are sort of my only sources of income while I'm searching for a new job. That means whatever support you can provide, be a follow, sub, donation, bits, patron, whatever, uh, it's all greatly appreciated. You also might note that there is a Gen Con donation ticker on the overlay as well. My intention is to go to Gen Con regardless of whether or not I'm fully funded, but obviously it would greatly help my wallet if I was. Uh, make sure to take care of yourself first, though. The, the last thing I'd want is, you know, you guys to support me and then not be able to take care of yourselves. Uh, but with that out of the way, we're just going to dive right into things. And like all my Star Trek Adventures games, we are going to start with an opening monologue. So, Captain Dominus, if you'd be so kind. Official log, Captain Valkorion Dominus. Imperial date, 0783405.M03. Location, Dark Royale. We're on course for the Lasai Expanse. We've been tasked with a joint mission to help patrol and give a bit of show of force for Starfleet. Due to the incursion of the Tholian Imperium or Empire, whatever they want to call themselves, they made a mistake. Now they're going to be facing it when they try and do anything again, we'll be there. This ship, despite being under the purview to some degree of Starfleet, is under my command completely. And with that in mind, I'll be making sure to enact all of the best traits of the Cornets. But I have been tasked with this ship to also provide some tactical thinking outside of the box. And with that in mind, I have established a crew that I believe shall assist with this. And one of the last things that we are to do before we get underway completely is to have a test with a vessel called the Nighthawk and its Captain Singral. I look forward to this, and I look forward to seeing how my crew functions. But I look forward to mostly seeing the disappointed look on the Federation's face when this vessel is defeated. I hope to make it swift, but if not, I hope to drag it out. With that in mind, I have called a meeting with my senior staff in the war room. End log. All right. So as he said, uh, the KMS Dark Royal is a proud member of the Cornet Imperium's fleet. Yes, I realize that name is ironic. Uh, when Starfleet initially put out the call for aid in the Lasai Expanse, the Dark Royal was one of the few ships that answered. And really, what better way to show Starfleet and the Federation at large that the Cornet are a much-needed ally in these trying times than by showing up and uh, kicking ass and taking names. Uh, currently, the Dark Royal is a few hours out from its scheduled check-in with the USS Nighthawk. Uh, as was alluded to in Mr. Dominus's log, uh, Admiral Zier has arranged for a little trial for both the crew of the Nighthawk and the Dark Royal. The two ships will be engaging in a simulated battle with the victor gaining bragging rights being one of the powerhouses in the sector. And, as promised, we are going to cut to the war room. Now, one thing I would say here is, yes, we are using the official Klingon tile set for this. Uh, the reason for that is because I simply, um, you know, I, I like it. It's, it's nice and shiny. Uh, it fits well. And if you just imagine corn symbols instead of, uh, you know, uh, Klingon symbols everywhere, it's good to go. 
Uh, one quick note for the overlay, I do have to restart Rule 20, but we can go ahead and keep on with the scene. So, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to start with Dominus, and we're going to work our way counterclockwise around the table. So, Dominus, if you could introduce your character, uh, tell us a little bit about their appearance, uh, tell us about what your position here is on the ship, even though I think it might be obvious in your case, and uh, we'll go from there. So Dominus stands roughly at uh, seven feet tall. He's not the tallest one in the room, but he enjoys his nice seven. He is wide as well. Um, he is different from the typical cornets in that he is not red, but he is a um, almost an albino color. Uh, his horns taper off with uh, from going from white to black, and he just has his hair hung down loosely. Uh, he is in the typical imperial uh, outfit for a cornet captain. Um, and he, for the last little bit, he's ran the ship uh, rather smoothly. Um, yeah. Alrighty. Up next, we have our Bolian Starfleet uh, liaison, I think is the proper way to say it. So, uh, Rancor, tell us a little bit about your character. Well, Ramia Chorus, she, <laughs> she's blue. Um, and she has this... <laughs> She's rather shy and, in this case, scared, but she's trying to come off as a very pleasant person. And her hands are sweating right now, so she's, like, constantly wiping them on her pants. And she's just looking around saying, Hi, I am uh, or I'm a Chorus or Chorus. And, yeah. All right. <laughs> I am the scientist. Yes, that's what it is. Very nice. All right, up next we have uh, Cargith, or Cragith. I'll say it right eventually. Uh, Soup, tell us a little bit about your character. This is Master at Arms, Cragith. I am a in rather impressive cornate specimen standing at a total of eight feet tall with an incredibly dark purple complexion, which is rare amongst the cornate, as well as being... Since I am Master at Arms, I'm effectively the security, the chief security officer on this ship. And I have a distinct lack of being able to put up with others' nonsense. And I also have a distinct lack of understanding of metaphor. Alrighty. And before we get to uh, Bro Guy, uh, there is a supporting character here. Uh, her name is Hiv. Uh, also known as Ghost Razor, so she'll respond to either name. Uh, she is a homebrew species, if you couldn't tell already. Uh, she is a, uh, a, a Shisney. Uh, a Sisney. I can say my own species name, thank you very much. Um, if you are curious about them, they are essentially human augments that uh, there's been mutations with. Uh, that means that they stand pretty tall, around 7, 8 feet tall. Uh, they've got charcoal black skin. And uh, otherwise, just think of them as human augments. Probably the best way to go about it. Uh, but yeah, we're going to go to Bro Guy, and then the scene will be open to role play. So tell us a little bit about your character, Bro Guy. Mm, well, Artana Kaya is, you would call them a tall character, but with the other crew, probably probably one of the shorter ones, except for our Blue Federation uh, compatriot. Um, she sits very nonchalant in the typical uh, uniform for the cornets, uh, with the exception of her scales have been used to kind of partially kind of create a collar around her face and various protrusions that would normally be either scraped off, chipped off, but hers has been kind of made into a ornate like headdress and various parts over the uniform. And she's sitting in an extremely relaxed pose despite being in the captain's presence very far back in the chair. It's almost like she's going to fall over. She's probably pushing the chair away from the table. Um, she's one of uh, quiet demeanor and just kind of carefully glancing at every character as they're uh, sitting there, just quietly, hasn't mentioned anything, staring at a data pad. She looks like she's scrolling through something at the same time. All right, very good. Well, Dominus, it's your meeting in the war room. I'm going to let you run it. Good to see the senior staff here, and our guest. So, have you all gone over the mission brief? 
and seeing what we're supposed to be doing, and have you also had a chance to take a look at the schematics and layout of the Deep Space 15? I have, sir. I've given it over many uh, looks already. I've looked at most of the specifications, and I've identified several key weaknesses in the structure. Good. Prepare a report, and when we're within range, transmit to the station. Slides over, cool. Pad. Already done, sir. Good. As you all know, we are being deployed to a very far reach. The Cornet Empire does not have anything over here. So we are tasked with two missions. A show of force, and also the face of the Cornets. So, with that in mind, I need all of you to keep in mind that they will not tolerate our belligerent behavior. We all have to do our best to make sure that we are the friendliest cornets they'll ever see. Make myself clear? Aye, sir. Number one. Any report on this Nighthawk? And uh, I think I forgot to mention, but uh, Hiev is your number one. Uh, she pulls up a pad and says, uh, Yes, Captain, I am going over schematics now, and I am realizing that the key uh, strategic value of the Nighthawk, and now apparently she's French, um, uh, the, the key value is within its cloaking device. I, I am not understanding why they would use such a cowardly weapon, if you could even call it a weapon. But it is what it is, and she kind of puts the pad on the table, and a holographic display of the Nighthawk projects above it. And all of you can see it as she begins pointing out certain areas. Um, I leave it to your imagination uh, which areas she points out, because I don't want to spoil the mystery. Uh, but she finishes her report and says, I believe with uh, certain modifications to our usual tactics that we will be perfectly uh, capable of decimating them in this trial. Good. Then I'll leave it to you to disseminate the information amongst the personnel of the ship. And Kragath. Aye, uh, Captain. Make sure that the men are aware that we're going to be doing a simulation. So make sure that they don't accidentally fire, beam aboard, or try to board the ship. Aye, uh, Captain. And of you, our Starfleet friend. Yes, sir. Any advice or input you could give us about a vessel? Typically about their tactics, response times, anything. Possibly. <laughs> um, I believe that they will be um, intimidated by your stature and your um, horns. Uh, and let's since this is a simulation, I am assuming that they will try to challenge us and make this go as quickly as possible. Dominus is going to get closer to our Starfleet friend. Okay. Intimidating. Me. I'm just a nice guy. Captain, I believe that your stature is quite intimidating to the smaller creatures. Yes, I'm aware. But, are Starfleet individuals so easily intimidated by someone that's tall and just has a couple of horns? Probably the build and the... Um... <laughs> the... I guess the way you speak, sir, you are very to the point and do not beat around the bush. He'll just give you the biggest grin he can muster. He's like, welcome aboard. I do appreciate any valuable input you can provide in this, but also for the future help you can provide us. I we will do not, my best. Oh, sorry. We are not bound by the Prime Directive or any of your other restrictions, but I will take your advice into consideration for any missions and choices I may have to make. Yes, sir. I will keep that in mind. The final subject I wish to touch upon 
is the command chain. I am the captain. Ghost Razor is the first officer. And because we are doing a joint operation with Starfleet, I'm appointing a bullion friend as second officer. If anyone has any objections, feel free to challenge me. Eyebrow raised, goes back to the pad. Uh, he have actually kind of smiles and coughs and says, I am but having a one challenge, Captain. Um, you say second in command. Uh, should that not be third? You're first officer. She's second officer. My rank is above that. She smiles and points over at Kragath. Remember, Captain, he is not one for metaphors. Mm. Kragath? Yes, Captain. Command chained has changed. I'm still Captain. Ghost Razor is first officer, and a bullion friend is second officer. That was understood, Captain. It was not a metaphor. Well, I'd like to be sure, especially with changes with you. If anything else, this meeting is dismissed. All right. So it's right about then that you guys sort of wander back to the bridge and take your individual stations. Uh, I've gone ahead and taken the liberty of labeling them. Uh, it is at this point uh, that actually uh, one of you, let's say, uh, let's say Koros, uh, you're getting a incoming hail. All right. So I turn to the captain he's like would you like me to accept this transmission or the hail put it on screen and appearing on screen is a certain character and a certain captain and i'm going to let them describe themselves so wolf dog tell us a little bit about uh, mr singral well so yeah i am playing captain luxa arthur singral uh i am the captain of the nighthawk a uh, starfleet intelligence vessel uh, Sengrel himself is half bully and half trill, so he does have the spots, but he is also empathic, so he does have the ability to sense the emotions of people, similar to Deanna Troy in uh, Next Generation. Uh, regardless of which, um, Sengrel has spent a considerable amount of time in the Expanse at this point, although he doesn't have any personal uh, inklings with the Cornets quite just yet. This will be his and the crew of the Nighthawks' first outing. At least in terms of personality, he's a relatively jovial man, and he attempts to have a smile on his face at all times, except he, unless he gets pushed to the brink. Other than that, then he'll be curt, full stop, and he'll do everything necessary within his power that's been vested within between himself and Starfleet to accomplish his mission. But other than that, he prefers to put on a good face, and he means it too. Very good. Well... Appearing on your screen, Sengral, is the Cornet Bridge, and appearing on the Cornet Bridge screen, there is uh, Sengral's Bridge. So take it away. So this is Captain Luxor Arthur Sengral of the Federation Starship Nighthawk. Are you reading me, Dark Royal? Yes, sir. We are, Captain. Well, that's good to hear. Are you ready for a play date? I'm Captain Tengral, and looks like the crew is ready as well. Well, that's fantastic. You know, beforehand, before we get this show underway, I invite you to uh, come to the Nighthawk. I mean, I'm sure there's a few things that we'd like to discuss, you know, captain to captain. And there's a few things Starfleet has inter is interested in me asking you. Very well. You, the rest of your crew is invited to join as well. I'll pass that message along to the rest of them, but they will have their duties aboard the ship of first. I see. So mid-sentence, uh, Hiev actually mutes it temporarily, turns to you, Captain, and says, Captain, I think it would be better if they came to us. It would show a better show of strength. Then how about a trade? Some officers go over there, some go, come, can come over here. That would be acceptable. I merely wish to, as you say... Make sure the Quinnet are putting their best foot forward. <clears throat> and then she Captain. unmutes it. Oh, sorry, unless you had oh. something to say, in which case it remains muted. I, I had something to say, Captain, I do not understand. Why did they request a play date? 
this is a simulation of a fight. It's a phrase. <clears throat> Regardless Continued. of Raised what security brow. says, uh, Captain, I would be very interested in having a look-see if we're going to play with them for a bit. You're one of the people who's thinking of taking a board. Maybe get a peek at that cloaking tech. Absolutely. Maybe. All right. Resume. Now it's unmuted. It looks like I have a couple of officers willing to join. And if you would like, you can have some of your officers aboard our vessel. Have a tour, if you will. Now, how can I refuse a request like that? Well, I look forward to it. Do you have the coordinates where we shall meet at? I, uh, my helm officer will send them to you, to your transporter room. Very well. Anything what? else, Captain? That's all. See you shortly, Captain. And transmission. All right, sure enough. View screen goes back to the stars flying by. Oh, what information do we have on this Captain Singral? Why don't we make a roll of it here? Uh, let's see. Who would be best suited for this? Uh, let's pick on Kuros for a little bit. Uh, so, Kuros, uh, I would like you to roll. Uh, let's do a reason and command, which might not be your best stats, but I think it applies best here. Uh, reason and command, and if someone could get the Dark Royals computers and command. I'll take Dark Royal. All right, and the difficulty here is only a one. Okay, so I do both reason and command? Yeah, so the way the, the sheet time? works is you'll click either reason and command, and then a bunch of windows will pop up, like, saying what's your discipline, how many dice you're rolling, things of that nature. Got it. Um, so the discipline would be in this case, right? Yep, discipline would be command in this case. And are we rolling a... 1d20 or uh by default it's always 2d20 okay. is there an applicable focus let's take a gander at your focuses here uh i would say yes you actually do have a focus that would apply here yes. <laughs> all right so that means two successes means one momentum so whoever whichever one of you wants to keep track of that so, Kuros, what you're seeing is a brief overview of Sengral's uh, time here in the Lasai Expanse. And since we have him here in the game, uh, why don't we let Sengral uh, decide what it is that you learn about him? Certainly. Well, considering that he is specifically intelligence, a lot of the missions in the Expanse would be classified. However, what you do have on him are in terms of his personality which is similar to what I described earlier. One of the things that is noted, at least if you wanted to take some pattern recognition from the actions that he's taken, is that most of the time he's going to try to wait and see and try to wait for the correct moment or the correct timing before he wants to go execute a plan. It seems like Sengral is a person that necessarily favors a all-in-one approach. All right, so Karas, that is what you learn. Got it. So, how long before we meet the uh, Nighthawk? Approximately one hour, Captain. Very well. Let's make sure the ship is prepped, even if it is going to be a simulation. And I want to hear some ingenious ideas from everyone in, well, hopefully before the battle starts. Anyone else wishing to go aboard the Nighthawk? And who's going to stay behind to offer a tour for the Starfleet personnel? I would be happy to be staying behind and giving tour. Very well. Anyone else want to come along? I have a quick question out of character. Sure. 
Um, is this uh, the simulation taking place now, or is it going to take place after the, I guess, the tour? After the tour, like there's going to be time for you guys to go over, check each other out, and then you'll go to a specific position and then there'll be a countdown and then the trial will start. Got it. But yeah, I guess this is a uh, both in and out of character uh, question. So obviously Dominus is going over. Um, Kaya, you're going over, at least if I heard correctly. Mm -hmm. um, who else is going over? All right, I will just take it to mean that those two are going over. All right, yep. so we're going to briefly cut to the theater of the mind as uh, we sort of see the Dark Royal arrive on spot. And I have a question for you, Singral. Would the Nighthawk be already uncloaked, or would you make a grand show of it? Uh, we wouldn't arrive cloaked at all. We would arrive under regular you know, regular warp. We wouldn't hide from sensors. Very good. In that case, uh, we see the Nighthawk, the Scryer-class intelligence vessel. The two vessels sort of come up within transporter range of each other, and there's a shimmering red light as uh, Dominus and Kaya beam over to the Nighthawk. And waiting for them is at least Singral. If you want anybody else from the Nighthawk, just say so, and I will throw them on screen. I do. I would like uh, my chief of security, uh, Commander Helsing. Okay. Um, even though he's not here right now, theater and mind wise, I'd like to uh, have my first officer with me as well. Okay. And uh, they're not here at the moment, supporting character wise, but I would like one of my intelligence officers, we could throw it away as a random no name, to be with me as well. Okay. Out of character. Out of character. Well, in, in universe, but not obviously explaining it to anybody else. I'd like to actually try to attempt to task them with uh, gaining what they can from uh, the Cornet's computer banks. Okay, we'll do nothing that. Nothing damage, yeah, nothing super damaging. Um, and, uh, you know, not enough to raise suspicion, but try to get more than what Starfleet already has on them since I'm here right now. All righty. Uh, we'll roll for that because I, I think the uh, I think the Dark Royal crew is going to be pretty much doing the same thing. So we'll handle that all at once. But yeah, uh, Dominus and Kaya, you materialize on the transporter pad of the Nighthawk. I'll just look down at Captain Singral for a second with a raised eyebrow. I'm like, oh, right. And he's going to hold out his right hand. He's like, this is a tradition amongst most of the Starfleet officers I've encountered. A handshake. It is indeed, but cultural pleasantries aside, you can do whatever you're comfortable with. It's nice to finally meet you in person, Captain. Nice to meet you as well. So, these are my officers. Uh, here's my first officer, Commander Bashir, and my Chief of Security, Lieutenant Commander Helsing. Hmm. Greetings. This is Greetings, my sir. Chief Engineer Kea. A pleasure. He's thrilled. Absolutely. Well, Captain, let's get down to business. I have people already available to give you and your crew a tour if you so desire. Very well. I look forward to touring this vessel. I've heard some interesting things about it. I'm certain. How about we uh, come and meet in my ready room? Very well. All right. So while Kaya is getting the tour and getting uh, her chance to do a little bit of spy craft, we're just going to have uh, Dominus and Singral in the ready room. So before we actually begin this, um, I say it's obviously implied that I'm going to tell my crew for the crew that's going to come over from the Dark Royal, not for them to touch any sensitive areas, keep things classified. Hopefully I wouldn't need to say that, but if such a thing needed to be said, I'm going to say it. <laughs> got to cover myself now. Okay. <laughs> it has been so noted. Good. Anyway, so, so Captain, I must ask, why you specifically? It's because I'm not the typical cornet. I think outside the box, and I have done some negotiation with other species and first contact. 
This is why I'm out here. Truth be told, it doesn't necessarily seem like Starfleet has too many, too much information on the Cornets. I, for one, obviously welcome an ally, especially in these trying times. And But if that's the case, I mean, if you're so interested in working for us, what about actually petitioning to join the Federation? Have you ever actually has the Cornets actually gone through the Federation Council? I would game do have the cornets tried so they've they tried have? once before um however what happened was at the time the federation council deemed that the cornet were a liability um because this was sort of in the middle of the dominion war and even though they were desperate for allies at the time the upper brass and sort of the diplomats felt that they the cornet were too unstable uh to sort of trust if that makes any sense The Conrad Imperium has tried once before, but due to the nature of us, we're like a rabid beast in a small room with a bunch of fragile, what's it called, dishware. I believe the expression I'm looking for is a bull in a Chinese shop. I suppose that's the accurate Earth expression. I myself, I'm not completely sure, <laughs> seeing that I'm not from there. But regardless of which... I mean, that's the decision that was best left to the diplomats at a different time. However, here is now, and I hope we could forge a lasting relationship going forward, even outside of the military maneuvers. Well, that is the hope, and that is the reason why I'm here. If they were not serious, they would have sent a typical cornet captain out here, and anything that looked at the ship wrong would have been shot at. So, you have me. Well, and I'm grateful for that, but considering of good, we're both good men of standing, I want to be completely clear with you. I myself right now, I'm here at the request of Admiral Zier, as you know. Specifically, I haven't necessarily been asked to only evaluate you and your crew or the Cornets themselves. But truthfully, I'm more personally concerned about the damage that you might cause to the Expanse. Now, don't get me wrong, the irony isn't lost on me that some might even be able to say that Starfleet right now is its own worst enemy out here, and I wouldn't necessarily disagree. But if you're going to help us, I welcome unconventional thinking. But hopefully, I hope you have the ability to think two steps ahead. I do. This is why I've made most of my career as a captain to be more diplomatic, negotiate and talk things through while keeping a modicum of control over those that are underneath me. I do value my crew's insight and their information they can provide, but at the end of the day, at the end of the shift, it is my decision, and I am most humbled that I'm not held down by what you call the Prime Directive. I do understand its need and the record the requirements for it to be in this organization. But until the Cornets are in Starfleet, I will observe it, I'll consider it, but I may not always follow it. And if I can interject real quick here, um, if I have the timeline correct, uh, Sengral, you would be aware of the fact that the Cerberus crew may have semi-recently had a uh, oopsie when it came to the Prime Directive involving a certain species that got gunned down by a certain uh, security officer, shall we say. So you are aware <laughs> of those events. Uh, if I need to go into further explanation, I'm going to let Shizno handle it. <laughs> I popped a bunch of bugs with electricity. <laughs> and that was first contact, so, you know, that went well. And last contact. Well, to be fair, in any case, I'm sorry, go ahead. You first. Um, to be fair, I tried to talk to them twice, and they were like, no. <laughs> well, that's the way these things go, I guess. Mm -hmm. But back in character. Well, the Prime Directive specifically, uh, you, you'd be correct. It's our burden to bear at this moment, not yours. But as long as we're allies, I hope you and as long as you're working together with us on maneuvers, I hope that you would at least be semi-conscious I'm not asking you to adapt all our values overnight, but truthfully, there are better representatives of the Prime Directive than those that you've met on Deep Space 15. 
Well, I've yet to meet anyone on that station. We were en route. But, as I said, I do plan on considering it. I have no <sighs> intentions on uplifting any species we come across. I do believe that the civilization should advance sufficiently, but I do not believe in the extinction of a civilization because of some phenomena or because some people want to exploit another culture just because they see them as different. So at this time, I'd actually attempt to, I'd like to attempt to read uh, Captain Dumbass with my empathic abilities just to see if he's necessarily telling the truth and he's on the quote, his version of the straight and narrow. So to be clear here, you are specifically using your empathic abilities, yes? That's correct. You get nothing. <laughs> <laughs> All right then, well. Welcome surprise. Well, in any case, Captain, well, you are free to tour the rest of this ship if there's anything else that you wish to discuss, whether it be personal or more of a more sensitive nature, you are free to comms me at any time. However, I have other duties to attend to. As the Captain does. Thank you. I will make sure to stay clear of any sensitive areas as well. I will uh, most, I will do the same on your ship, of course. I wouldn't want to spoil all the surprises. Very well. Thank you again, sir. All right. Uh, so uh, we are going to sort of sideline those two for the moment, and we're going to go to uh, the three Helsing, Bashir, and Kaya. Uh, you are currently being given a, the tour, Kaya, and I'm curious uh, what Bashir and or Helsing might be showing you at this time. Hallways. <laughs> Lots of hallways. <laughs> this is a lovely ship, uh, c Commander. Uh, do you not have a main engineering? We do. In... Um, we can take you right that way. I would be thoroughly and I would thoroughly enjoy that. I just have to remember where I put the force fields in the hallways. I think I remember. Oh, don't worry. I don't plan on touching anything. I'm just curious to see what a Federation design looks like from the inside. Oh, well, by all means. And Exo, he's a strong, silent type. We'll just take him down to the uh, engineering. And in there we have Kassat, our Vulcan um, engineering lead, not the chief of engineering. He's away at the moment. But this is main engineering. Fascinating. And Kaya is not looking at whatever the warp core might be. You, she's looking at the corners of the rooms. She's staring at each individual strut as if she's counting them in her head and just slowly turning back, does a full circle, and then looks back to you expectantly. Why don't we make a roll of that? Uh, why don't we have you do a insight engineering, please? Difficulty one. Insight engineering. <laughs> yes. Site, engineering, and then um, power systems. I'd let it happen. Um, okay. Boom. A complication. Oh my goodness. You see nothing wrong here. This seems typical Starfleet. Nothing out of the ordinary. And do I see his lips moving? As, her lips moving as she's counting. Yes, I oh, would absolutely. say with the complication. Yes. <laughs> One, two, three, four. And we could, in goodwill, we could kind of let you know what the girders are made out of, the supports oh. and everything. Oh, I was just thinking the headspace in here was quite adequate for a race. The races that inhabit the Federation vessels are normally so um, close to the ground. Oh, 
the Federation does is made up of many different types, and we like to leave room for other potential members who might be more vertically enhanced, so they'd be welcome aboard our ships. I see. And Um, uh, real quick, Dominus, is it time for the thing? Sure. All right, in walks Captain Sengral, but it's not really Captain Sengral, but you don't know that. Carry on, Dominus. You walk in in disguise. How's the tour going? Going well. Okay, do you have any any more questions? Anything? I would be curious about your main dilithium chamber, but I understand that that's taboo. So I'll just stay here and glance from afar. Mm-hmm. Unless your captain mm-hmm. gives us permission to look a little closer. Oh, well, the captain would never do that because, as you said, that's taboo. Of course not. Oh, Commander, could I borrow you for a second here? Sir? Just, come on, just for a brief second here. Sorry to interrupt the, uh, interrupt the tour. Take your time. It's fine. Lieutenant Commander, I have a, a proposition for you for the simulation we're going to have upcoming here. Yes, sir. I want you to start the simulation off with the ship at half capacity in function. I want to test to see how everyone reacts to the ship already being damaged at the start of the battle. I want to see everyone's reaction time to hopefully try and, you know, be the underdog. And I would say, based on that order, this would be something you could test again. So, Dominus, give me a presence command. Uh, Helsing, I want you to give me a insight command or an insight con. And it's going to be insight opposed, con. so uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, I'm trying to persuade him. Can I use persuasion as a focus? I will let it happen. And uh, Helsing, if you have people reading, if you have uh, anything that would allow you to gain greater insight as to a person's demeanor, any focus like that would apply here. Infiltration? Yeah, I would say infiltration could apply here. Okay. Insight, command? Command or con. I'll let you do either. For me, they're the same. Uh, I'm taking that momentum to get three dice. Okay. Oh, that is something I forgot to say. So the uh, Nighthawk crew, you guys do have your own pool of momentum. It's essentially threat. Um, Those eight points that you have currently stored up, that's for the entire session. You can pull as many as you want at any time, but that's for the entire session, just so you know. Oh, real captain, can I pull one, please? Yes, you may. But if you fail, this is, don't forget about crew evaluation, so you, may, you better not. <laughs> I'm, I'm so screwed on those as it is. It's... I mean, I'm pretty sure I'm going to promote Loxley. So. <laughs> well! All right, well, well Loxley's let's... taking your job. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, good news, bad news here. Uh, so, Dominus, you actually get two momentum from that. Um, so what this means is that Helsing... You believe him. You believe him implicitly. Like, there's nothing wrong here. This is perfectly okay. Oh, I was getting ready to challenge him to authenticate a Charlie Victor, but okay. Yeah, there's just something about him today. He's very charming. How many people are watching me? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, would ha- would it be fair for me to say that Helsing is distracted and Bashir is otherwise stone-faced? Oh, but Kassat would be watching him like a hawk. Okay. This is true. Uh, do we know what Kassat's scores are at the top of our head? Yes. Uh, 12 we... and 5s. 12 and 5s. All right. I will roll for them. I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> I will roll for them. Uh, what is it you're trying to do, Kaya, exactly? Nothing too malicious. I would literally just want to get closer to their warp core, and I want to take a closer look. And I'm... I mean, if that requires me pulling out a panel, then I'll do that. But if it doesn't, I just want to look. Uh, I want to get an idea of their power consumption. 
I think is, is what she's uh, going after. Okay. Uh, let's call this a fitness and engineering uh, difficulty of two, and it will be opposed, uh, and I will do the opposing role. Okay. Fitness. I do have my apologies. I do have a uh, have some stats in mind for that specific character when you want to call on that. Uh, I just need to know uh, what is their insight and security. Insight is ten. Security is four. Rolling against the 14, that got it. Okay. I would like to take one of our momentum. So okay. I have three. And then um, Starship Power Systems again. Yep. Oh, dear. Okay. Now, because I used a momentum, I would like to use uh, Cautious Engineering. Whenever you attempt a task with engineering, you can buy one or more. De- ugh, and you and buy, you buy one or more. Yep. You can re-roll. You can re-roll. All right. <laughs> well, the good news is, well, good news for you, bad news for the Nighthawk. Unfortunately, their uh, watchful eye is not so watchful. You still oh, roll complication. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay, so, where's the interlock? Uh, let's do it this way. So, Kaya, you are able to get a greater insight into the Nighthawk. Um, let's say that you are able to determine the Nighthawk's power level. Like, you know they have, I think the Nighthawk has, what, 11, 10 power? I think it's 10. Uh, I think. Let me let me check real quick. I'm calling it up now. We have 13. Well, there you know we they 13. have 13 power. Uh, unfortunately, as you realize this, uh, you knock over the panel you so subtly removed, and everybody in the engineering bay just turns to look at you. Oh, gonna... uh, how clumsy of me. Uh, oops. I'm going to look at the lieutenant commander and go like, how about you take her to... The lounge or any other place besides engineering. Let's restrict her areas of view. We'll do, sir. All right. So, uh, Commander, we'll go ahead, and oh, go ahead. Have you link up with your captain? And uh, I'll just nod at everyone. Like, oh, continue on. And I'm All gonna right. head on out. So not to leave the uh, rest of the players uh, left out. So uh, what I'm going to say here is that it is at uh, your discretion, uh, those of you that remained on the uh, Dark Royal. So that would be uh, Hiev. Uh, Hiev, I'm going to just be a silent vote. So Kragrith and Koras, uh, you would be running the tour. And I've just put us here briefly. Um who from the Nighthawk would have gone over? Uh, I think for sake of argument, I think a lock or a lack you would have gone over um, just because we want to keep you involved. Um, but what area or areas of the ship would Koros and Kragrith have shown a lack in anyone else at this time? A lack would make it very well known that he wants to see the engines. Okay. Don't you let them touch my baby? Don't you let them touch my baby? We can cut to the engine room. All right. There's a lock. Blow him up a little bit. And then crag it. All right. So uh, the three of you arrive outside main engineering. And uh, I think Kragrith has stepped away for a little bit. So we are going to let... Uh, cross handle this scene. No, I'm, I'm oh, back. Oh, you're here? Welcome back. Well, you can both handle the scene then. Carry on. Out of character, what time of day would this be considered? Mm, beta shift. Beta shift. Okay. I hope you're doing so... well today. <laughs> Sorry. No, 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 you go. It's like basically, I chorus is asking how Alec is doing, what, and um, but not so much pestering him, but just trying to gauge um, because she hasn't been around Starfleet personnel in like for a little bit, and so she's just trying to get a breath of fresh air and like some more, I guess, ease of personality. 
It's like, how are you today, uh, Lieutenant Alec? Alec appears very much on edge due to the giant hulking monstrosity of a creature le leaning over his shoulder. Uh, fine, thanks. Um, this is a very interesting ship you have here. Um, forgive me, but it seems that you you rather stand out. How how did you end up on this ship? Well, I am acting as a liaison for Starfleet and the Cornets, and this crew, and trying to make friends. And so far, so good. No one's tried to hurt me, kill me, eat me, or anything like that. Um, I, <laughs> I should say that I don't think I would really work well with their digestive system. Um, the Cornet yes. do not consume sentient flesh. That is very good to know. I I don't have to worry about anything anymore or come up with reasons of why uh, you shouldn't eat. I think that means they don't eat living things. But if you're... Never mind. Alex, you do to to living things. <laughs> uh, so your engines, you... um, What do you warp? Warp 7? Warp 7 and a half, 8? It looks a little uh, hodgepodge, if I, if you don't mind me saying. Sorry, I'm, I'm used to the uh, the Starfleet method of decor. I haven't been on one of these ships in ever. I find it a little a bit charming. It's it's different from the everyday life of Starfleet. It's a little bit of color over the gray. Alec looks down at his uniform like, hey, I... Oh, I see your point. Um... And yeah, I think this is a good opportunity. Alok, if you want to roll me an insight engineering, please. I'm Difficulty of... Uh, let's make it a one. Okay. Please roll complications so I don't feel bad. I am Alec. Complications are the best. Yeah. Uh, insight engineering. Uh... Earn your keep, boy. Okay. <laughs> uh, I have animal handling as a focus. Does that no, help? animal handling will no, not help you here. We are not. <laughs> uh, if if you said that to my guy, you'd be out in airlock within three seconds. I guess their technology doesn't count as ancient because that's also one of my focuses. No, unfortunately not. Okay, well, no focus for me. We have quite a few redundancies, but we're not ancient. Uh, you need to roll one more d20 there. Oh, sorry. Nuffle, hear my prayer. Eighteen. Yeah, All right. So, uh, what you learn is very similar to what Kaya learned over on the Nighthawk. You learn the power level of the KMS Dark Royal, and that is specifically a ten. Use that to your advantage. All right. Uh, how big is the Dark Royal for a sense of scale? The Dark Royal is a scale four. Uh, but what I would say is if you give me a momentum, I will tell you about an additional system. I was actually going to ask if I could use my Identify Starship. Oh, do you have a talent to that effect? I do, yeah. I have con of 3+, plus, so it's the um, Identify Starship action. Oh. Awesome. Uh, in that case, uh, yes. I believe that, what, gives you a free question? Uh, if it's if I succeed on a daring and con check. Uh, it's Starship Expert, I think, is the yeah, talent Starship that comes in here. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, you can ask me one free question. <clears throat> Uh, does there, hmm, how do I phrase this properly? Is there any direction on the ship that isn't covered by we by their weapon arcs? Yes. Um, the rear of the ship is less weaponized than the front. Uh, I would say that based on the systems you're seeing, 
that a primary uh, the primary focus is on frontal assault and broadsiding, um, specifically with a railgun and disruptor banks. The rear quarter is only covered by a single array. Uh, well, thank you very much for the tour. I think this has been very enlightening indeed. It's nice to get off the Nighthawk once in a while and not be under constant fire or scrutiny. And he kind of looks behind him at the the hulking mass. Craig oh, don't mind Craig. He's he's a nice guy. Or rather, do mind him. Don't upset him. <laughs> uh, I will do my best. However, what happens in our play date? with sort of a wink and a nudge. <clears throat> uh, all bets are off. I was not informed that this would be a play date. I was informed this would be a battle simulation. It's a battle simulation? Oh, shit, I gotta learn my met my, my uh, metaphors as well. And he kind of chuckles is... to himself as leads, and he leads himself out of the engine room. <laughs> nice. All right. So, uh, needless to say, uh, unless anyone wants to go spying, uh, we can cut ahead. So here's your here's your uh, call to action. Anyone doing spy stuff? I do have I'm someone actually, doing spy stuff. I'm actually oh. going to tail Alec and uh, try to listen to see if he tries sending any information while he's walking through the halls and make sure he doesn't try to sneak anywhere he's not supposed to. Okay. And what over on the Nighthawk? Anything going on there? Uh, two things. Uh, one, um, my additional fluff supporting intelligence officer that I'd still like to see if I could uh, get information from the Dark Royals computer banks. Okay. Uh, do you know his scores? Uh, specifically, his would be a... Uh, let's make this a signals jamming, which I believe is... Uh, no, it would be an intercept. Uh, I need to know what is his insight and engineering. You looking at Calix? It'd be a uh, ten and a one. Ten and a one. Okay. If you're looking, if you're thinking about Calix, I was thinking about Calix. Yeah. All right. Uh, go ahead and roll the two d twenty there. Uh, the Nighthawk will assist you with a communications and security. The difficulty here, though, will be a three. I'll take care of the Nighthawk. And actually, the Dark Row has a, a certain individual doing something similar. He's trying to establish a backdoor connection to the Nighthawk uh, for communication purposes. Okay. So we'll handle that role in a second. Uh, I believe that's three successes here with the uh, Nighthawk crew. So what is it the Nighthawk wants to learn about the, the Dark Royal at this point? For the purposes of the battle simulation, um, if there's any other random frequencies or weaknesses between uh, when it comes to polarizing their hull, potentially, along with if there's any power discrepancies that happen uh, at certain points in time. And after we get that primary information, if we could get additional cultural information on them as well, um, that was something that Sandro will be most interested in. Uh, okay. Secret, anything else that may run contrary to Starfleet's mission out here in the Expanse. Okay. Uh, so I'll give you this: the following information. Uh, you are able to tell that they use polarized hull plating, which mechanically means that the Dark Royal breaches on four or more damage. You know that they have a blade of armor. You know that they have only photonic torpedoes, not photon torpedoes. Very key distinction. Uh, interestingly, you you do notice uh, something that your initial scans did not pick up uh, is that they have a neutronium ram on their ship. In fact, two of them because it's a two pronged ship. Um, you don't really know why they have such a thing or how, but they do. And I would say you would also get data on their railgun, meaning that their railgun is really only effective at close range. As far as cultural data is concerned, uh, I would say you're not getting anything super specific that you didn't already know. Oh, well, I'm thankful for small favors nonetheless. All right. 
So now we're going to do the exact same sort of role, but with what I'm assuming is Dominus in disguise. No, it's uh, a gentleman um, on the ship called Kaldar. Ah, Kaldar, the uh, Riemann spy, if I remember correctly. Yes. Excellent. All right. Well, he is going to be rolling in insight engineering of his own. And if someone could get the Dark Royals communications and security, I, too, will make this a difficulty three. I will buy a momentum. I, sorry, I buy a dice with momentum. Okay. And uh, either hacking or sabotage or infiltration as a focus. All of them would apply. Excellent. Ooh. Well, that's a complication. Maybe the Dark Royal can get you that success you need, though. Uh, who's got the Dark Royal? What is it? Uh, it is a communications and security. Communications. Security. All right. So, uh, Kaldar, you are able to break into the Nighthawk security, and uh, what is it you are looking for in particular? Just looking for a backdoor access into internal communications. So, if I wanted to, I could page someone on the ship. You know, give them a go word or something like that. Gotcha. Uh, I'm going to say with the complication, what happens is, is that the two hacks are actually going to collide with each other. And both ships begin to blare an alert that there is uh, incoming E-War. And this would alert not only uh, Kragith on the uh, Dark Royal, but uh, it would alert the security officer of the uh, Nighthawk as well. Alec feels a very large hand grab his shoulder. Ah. Sir? Understand, I know exactly what you were trying to do. I would suggest you stop. Immediately. He stops? I don't quite understand what you mean, sir. Electronic security breach. Someone uh, on your ship attempted to hack onto ours. Legitimately have no idea what you're talking about, and... Alec makes the I don't have anything on my person and like pokes at his ears and opens his mouth Did and empties his pockets. Did you bring someone else along with you? Uh, oh yeah, that. He... Sorry, I forgot the name, but yes. Oh yeah, there we was brought, the other one. I think you brought were, Calyx yeah. along with us. Calyx, thank you, yeah. Um, you were present at the transporter room? Have him come here now. Understand you have communicators. Uh, yes, sir. Tap? Uh, Calyx? Uh, I was going to say, if one of you wants to play him, or I can, it's up to you guys. Well, I sent him over there. I might as well play him. <laughs> Go for it. So, what can I do for, do for you, Lieutenant Commander? Our uh, escort uh, would like to have a word at um, hallway, I don't know, where are we? Hallway four, deck seven? Deck Outside. six. Oh, okay, thank you. Deck six? Well, I mean, if that's the case, then he should probably go ahead and... Uh... Did you did you talk to Commander Bashir? I don't know. Uh, it's probably... Uh... You know, this thing and all this. Uh oh, yeah. everybody's roboting. Either that's me that's roboting or it's everybody else. Roboting. All right. Uh, are we back? I think we're back. Yes. Seems good. Yes, we are. Okay, we're back. Yeah. Well, I don't know what that was. We were just all roboting there for a moment. We, we all became Borg. Testing, testing. Yep, we're working it's completely now. It's okay. Cool. E warfare was too effective. Yes. <laughs> we literally hacked our own Discord. Mm hmm. Uh, anyways, uh, you were saying uh, Wolf Dog before uh, everybody roboted. I was just saying, in character, Calyx is going to be, well, you should probably clear this with uh, Commander Bashir. I mean, I'm still enjoying this tour so far, and I must be getting back to the Nighthawk pretty soon. 
This yeah. is not a suggestion. Oh, well, in that case, I'm happy to oblige. Okay. So back over on the Nighthawk, uh, Captain Singral, the real one, you're privy to the fact that, uh, yeah, there's some E-War going on. In that case, I'll task the remaining security officers on the Nighthawk to continue to more strictly monitor all uh, royal personnel, but I won't necessarily uh, take any of them into custody. And I, But I will calm Captain Dominus shortly. But first, considering that there's e for, for going on, I'm going to trust my security and engineering teams to handle it and make sure they contain the breach. Right now, I'm, the only thing that I'm concerned with is making sure that no information has a uh, has been leaked and has gotten out. Okay. At this point, it's, at this point in time, I would currently be in uh, the intelligence center. Okay. And considering that these two ev- that these two events that have occurred, um, e warfare, which is not surprising, but additionally the fact that I couldn't necessarily read Dominus, I'd like to just browse uh, Starfleet intelligence files about. And look over tr- and look over transporter logs. Not necessarily looking for any inaccuracies, but things that may necessarily explain. I'm looking for a cultural explanation to this, along with you know a military one. I'm not necessarily looking to uproot uh, any individual on that ship. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Uh, I would say this would be a insight and command. Uh, I'm going to make the difficulty here a five for reasons that may be apparent if you succeed. And I would say that the Nighthawk can assist you with a computers and command. Took me a while to open my sheet. So what am I rolling here again? You're rolling an insight command, and the difficulty here is a five. Gotcha. So I'll be rolling 5d20 here. Wait, no. Mm, I'm going to spend one of my momentum to buy a dice. Okay. So I'm going to be rolling three. Uh, focuses of investigation and under, undercover operations. Definitely. Et cetera, et cetera. Okay, then. So, good news, bad news. The good news is you do succeed and thus uh, are going to get an answer. The bad news is that this entire process also alerts Dominus that you've done so. Um, so, what you learn, uh, Sengral, is something that you should have seen coming. Uh, Dominus, why don't you explain what's going on with you? Uh, Dominus is a, well, it's not obvious, changeling. He has been with the, uh, from, from, from success and information, he, I guess he would have pulled. Um, one of the big standouts that he got in his file is a single Dominion battlecruiser showed up in Coronet space during the Dominion War and was summarily destroyed. And that is one of the big events in his file that he can pull. And from his transport scans, it seems that there is a uh, morphogenic matrix hidden deep within the DNA of what he's pretending to be. Oh, well, that makes things even more fun. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, in any case, um, I don't have any other further orders here still. Uh, my security officers and engineering can still contain the threat. Um, if the uh, Dark Royal comes me specifically and they want me to go ahead and take care of this potential diplomatic incident, I'll of course go over right away. I would think by now both Dominus and Singral have been informed by their respective staff that, yeah, we're containing the problem and the other side is doing stuff. So let's make a scene of that. Let's, uh, let's have uh, the entire group on the Nighthawk meet back up, uh, say in a corridor or a, maybe even the transporter room. And I'm going to let the scene play out. Captain? Well, I mean, it's not surprising that we were keeping secrets from each other. I just didn't expect us both to be so bad at trying to find them. Well, it's actually kind of amusing, really. Didn't expect it to be easy. Didn't expect it to fail, but... It's humorous. It's funny. All in good spirit, I assume. Of course. In any case, uh, if you prefer, I'll go ahead and uh, take 
take custody of my officers if you prefer to have a uh, if you prefer to have your ship back. I I don't think that there needs to be any reprimand or repercussions against your officers. As I said, and this is all in good fun. We're testing each other. Most definitely. Most definitely. And, you know, same to you. I'm not here to go interject, uh, you know, Federation uh, circumstances and procedures upon your crew. In any case, Captain, please do be more mindful in the future. I hope this is a, a start of uh, something good. And it's, you know, let's make sure you work out these kinks the next time we meet. Well, trust me. I'll make sure, but, as I said, just playful fun. Both ships want to win this little simulation. No one wants to be called... The loser. In that case, uh, Sangro's going to go ahead and uh, outstretch his hand and go ahead and shake it again. But in his head, he's going to be like, how am I supposed to trust this man if I can't read him? Mm. Changeling. <laughs> a question for you, GM. Yes. Would I know that he got a hold of my file? With the complication, I would say yes. I'll take his hand and I'll smile. And because I know that he knows that I know, <laughs> I'm going to make faint little spots appear along the side of my head. <laughs> and then, well, no. Does anybody else see that? I think everybody sees it. Well, that jovial smile that Sengro likes to keep is going to turn into a half smile right now. He doesn't find that amusing. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, that's, a little bit, uh, that's a little bit annoying. But yeah, all in good fun. I'm just going to say, man, I'm going to have to write such a report to Director Chalmers later. <laughs> if I actually make sure I don't fire on them first. <laughs> are we all in the ha are we all in the hallway to see that? Like yeah. all together? Mhm. Mm oh. Interesting. In any case, um I'll go ahead and uh, take care of my officers, but uh I would like to link up with um the our Federation liaison on board the Dark Royal before I return and we get the show on the road. Sure. You wanted to be beam over or do you want to beam over to my ship? I'll beam over to yours. Very well. Right. And I'll find out who attempted the little reading. Have a nice little talk with them about failure. Have fun. <laughs> I plan on it. All right. So before we get to uh, the main event, we're going to have a brief scene between Koros and Sengral in the Science Bay. Now, uh, Koros, uh, the Science Bay is pretty much your sanctum. Uh, before you came here, it was pretty much not used at all, but you've spruced up the place, made it your own. And this is sort of where the magic happens. And Sengral has tracked you down and apparently wants to have a word. She's kind of freaking out right now because everything that is like being the liaison and making sure diplomatic relations are okay. She's like, oh no, what's going to happen? Everything has gone bad from the get. Mm -hmm. What's wrong? <laughs> In any case, uh, well, Sangro will enter the room, and for st uh, Koras's Starfleet rank, what would it be? Would it just be lieutenant regularly, or I, I would, would say it not be on the ship? Regularly. Okay. Well, I'm going to enter the room and just say, well, there's no need to be so tense, lieutenant. I mean, I don't have to necessarily be empathic to just see you freaking out right now. It's my job to help them, <laughs> like have good relations with Starfleet and I don't know exactly what happened and I don't know what you expect me to say at this moment, sir. <laughs> I don't expect anything. Calm down, Lieutenant. The only thing that happened right now is just general posturing. Nothing less, nothing more. No harm has actually come of it and you're not responsible and you don't have to take responsibility. At least not on the Starfleet end. I'm sorry if I if anything, I'm sorry I made things more difficult with you and your captain. As long as nothing bad comes out of it, I'll I'll be okay. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of which, since I feel partially responsible, I'd like to remind you again that your first duty is to Starfleet. 
don't get me wrong, being a cultural liaison is not easy. I mean, I've had a similar tour in the past and don't, and believe me, balancing those lines can get more difficult. I, in intelligence, we understand that the line can blur every once in a while, but you know, as long as you necessarily stick to your guns, uh, you'll be, I don't know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna make any promises. I'm not gonna say, okay, but you'll make it out of this. And hopefully the rest of us will too. <laughs> She's laughing nervously. Yes, sir. I I'm definitely keeping that in mind as we go about our business and everybody's business, really. But in any case, has I'm sure you, if it wasn't currently aware to you, I'm sure you're aware now that this post is not a vacation. And at this point, Captain Sangrel is going to hand her a data pad and a small device. So this is a Starfleet Intelligence Emergency Beacon. If by any means you feel like it's necessary for you to get out or you need to contact the Nighthawk or anybody or any other Starfleet installation within the Expanse covertly, this device will have you, give you the ability to do so. Now, unfortunately, our quote-unquote e-warfare stunt ne hasn't necessarily given us all of your ship's communication codes. So if there's ever a chance that you need to use it in the future, it may require general teaching on your part. But in any case, if you ever feel like it's necessary for you to send an emergency message, or there's something that you can't tell your captain, this is the way to do so. Going behind a cornet's back. <laughs> no. I don't know if that's exactly safe. Safeguarding your interest, your safety, primarily. Yes, sir. Well, oh. Tap to San Rose gonna have a big old sigh and we're like, well, it's, don't cheer up, Lieutenant. You know, these cultural dipl diplomatic missions have them are fun. You get to go see new cultures, to explore the galaxy, everything that you signed up for Starfleet for, right? Absolutely. More on the science side, but cultural interactions are always interesting to come across and experience. Well, you, before you, we uh, tow off here, if you still n find it necessary and you want to come over to the Nighthawk before this is over, feel free. In any case, uh, if there's anything else that you need to let me know, please do so. And or alert my crew. And uh, be safe out here. It's easy to get lost. Yes, sir. Thank you. And you do the same. Be safe. And good luck. And Captain Sandra will exit the room. Alrighty. It has been so noted that Karas now has a emergency Starfleet intelligence beacon. All right. So uh, we're going to skip ahead just for uh, timing's sake. We're going to skip ahead a little bit. Uh, both the Dark Royal and the Nighthawk have entered the Carceri Nebula. Uh, in sort of like the background shot, we see uh, Deep Space 15 server station sort of in the distance. Um, but both the Dark Royal and the Nighthawk have taken up appropriate positions in the Nebula and will be, be beginning the simulation when we come back from break. Uh, so we're going to take a 10 minute break here. Uh, if you all could be back at, uh, let's say, 1030 Eastern. All right. And BRB. Don't be scared. We're just, we just going to test.
All right, so, uh, as promised, uh, we are going to be doing some starship combat here. Uh, no holds barred, uh, unless you tell me otherwise. All damage and all effects that are uh, taking place are simulated, meaning that you guys can go balls to the wall and throw literally everything at one another. Um, by uh, virtue of wanting to be fair, I would like uh, Captain Singral and Captain Dominus. I would like you each to roll me a 1d100, and whichever one of you rolls the lowest, the ship will have the honor of going first. After you, Captain. Oh, thank you. I mean, I'm already going to take my initiative. <laughs> Well, Captain Dominus, it seems the Dark Royal is going to be going first. So, what would you like to do? Oh, get us in close. Prepare for ramming speed. I sir, er, that's right. That's that's uh, he have. I sir, preparing for ramming speed. Now, uh, checking distances here. Oh, I need to change that to units. One moment. I knew there was something wrong. One unit. There we go. All right, let's do some measuring here. Uh, if you wanted to go ramming speed, you could get to about here. Hopefully you can see my arrow. Okay, yep. Um, if you wanted to like get up in the Nighthawk's face, that would be a warp action. Could we ram at warp speed? <laughs> No, unfortunately not. <laughs> Stop. I'm getting flashbacks of the uh, Star Wars movie. <laughs> uh, okay, so that keep us though at uh, medium range, right? Uh, well, right now you're at extreme range from one another. Okay. So close range. All right, I'll actually change my order. Get us um within range of disruptor banks once we're close enough go into ramming range ramming speed so uh, what i will say is they could go through the asteroid field which would make it easier um but there is going to be an inc increased complication range if you go through the asteroids between you and the nighthawk hmm. uh who is our helm that's uh he ghost racer yep and uh, Kuros, why don't why don't you uh, pilot uh, Hiev? Why don't you do her roles? That way, uh, you are further involved, further experience. And that would be which part on the sheet? Uh, for her, uh, it's going to be a control and con. Um, but I have to make sure I do the right thing. So, do you want to move the Dark Royal into? Uh, meet within medium range or within long range is the question here. Because one's a one's a maneuver action doesn't cost power. The other one is an impulse and does cost power. Oh gosh. Um, I'd say let's go into medium range. Okay, so you are maneuvering. All right. So uh, uh, Hiev is going to roll a controlling con. Uh, if someone could get the dark royal rolling in engines con. The difficulty here is a zero, so free momentum. I'm on the engines. There's... Got it. Uh, command and con? Uh, control and con. Control and con. Two D twenty, right? Correct. Any applicable focus? Uh, she would have one, yes. Very nice. You start off with three momentum. So you guys can move anywhere within medium range. So anywhere within uh, six hexes. So where would you like to go? Uh, up there is good. Okay. Move you up there. And that will be your helm action. Which means... Anyone have a oh. quick action? Oh, quick to action. Okay. Anyone, anyone have that? Negative. What, what would be considered that? Uh, uh, it's a talent. talent. Quick to action. Oh, oh okay. One thing anyone does. Okay. I just wanted to ask that. Also, Bro uh, Guy, I think you're at four momentum. 
that's what I was going to ask. Thank you. All right. So do we or do we not have quick to action? Soup, do we have quick to action? Uh oh, we lost soup. Let me check his sheet. Uh, that's what I was doing. Quickly type it in. He does not have quick to action, unfortunately. No, unfortunately, I do not. All right, so that means okay. it is going to cut over to the Nighthawk. Question. Right. Yes. Since before we begin, I mean, the Nighthawk's turn, that is. Since mm -hmm. Kelsing did fail that check, would I actually now be aware that we're starting off with lower power? I'm going oh. to say it is up to Helsing's discretion whether oh, I or not. A long time ago. Yeah, whether or not <laughs> you you, uh, you brought it to your captain's attention. Because unless the captain has gone around and said, oh, yeah, we had a changeling aboard, I would think Helsing <laughs> might not have realized that he should have brought that up. I have not mentioned it to anybody else. That was outside of the room that saw this uh, the sequence. So if Helsing was there, since we dressed him down with both groups, that's up to him. Yeah, I, I saw the dots, but even before I would do something like that, I would announce that you announce before you do something on the bridge. Right. So it's, and like I said in, in chat, mm -hmm. sir, preparing to lower all shields and power to 50% per your previous order. Well, if that's the order that he gave, maybe the best intention right now is to spring the trap. Let's start out making him think that we have a... 50% uh, shields and 50% power. Okay. Can I actually... Well, that's a... Uh, sure. that's, I actually just want to mess with their sensors there to make them feel like we are... That we're running on lower power here. Not actually. Yeah, let's say... Let's roll this as a signals jamming task. Uh, so this is going to be a control engineering. And the Nighthawk will assist you with a communications and a security... Uh, however, the difficulty is something you choose, and this difficulty is what it is to break open this uh, sort of facade, if you will, or facade. Um, so you could choose a difficulty of one, two, or three. I will choose a difficulty of two, okay. um, and I will go ahead and roll for Thushran, since he is not here, who is our chief engineer. Okay. Did you, did you say control engineering? Control engineering. Nothing on the Nighthawk. Or do you use a momentum? Uh, I kind of want to save it right now, but it's up to the rest of the Nighthawk crew. Well, actually, yeah, let's go ahead and use it. It is the beginning of this of, of combat here. Yeah, so we'll use a momentum. Go ahead and buy a dice. And... Um, Focuses of warp field dynamics, power systems, all apply yeah, here. Yeah, like, so. that would work. Of course. Unfortunately, I mean, unless you want to spend his determination, uh, that's not going to be enough successes. Nope. All right. So, because you didn't roll a complication, you don't actually go to half power and shields, but what uh, Shathran says, he says... Sorry, sir. Uh, apparently our E-War stunt, they've seen through all our usual tactics. Wow. This is going to be even more fun. Mm -hmm. And we go back to the Dark Royal. Now, now, you are within ramming speed. Um, hmm. um, I would like to do the thing. Does that require me to use my turn? Oh, yes, it does. All right. Okay. So your thing, um, I believe we let me make sure I'm saying the right thing here. Uh, yes. Uh, same thing here. What difficulty would you like it to be at? Three. Three. All right. Go ahead. And you're going to roll pretty much the same thing. You're going to be rolling a control engineering. If someone could get the Dark Royals communications and security, please. Okay. I would like to use my determination on this. Okay. And my value I'm using is I must not fail. I like it. She's very determined at this point. So I'm not going to use any momentum. Um, I'm just going to roll the standard D20. Okay. Ooh, a three. All right. Uh, I just need to see the Dark Royals here. Mm 
uh, communication security. You began that? I don't think so. I think you just volunteered, just now. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so three successes. So what happens uh, but it goes is with the determination, right? With... Oh, right. So five successes. So you get two momentum. So you're capped on momentum. Uh, so uh, what happens is, Kaya, I would have. St- would you have told your captain what you were doing beforehand? Hell no. Hell no. So uh, what's going to be relevant then is that for everyone that is not Kaya, you're all going to see that the Dark Royals weapon arrays have been overcharged. Meaning that they deal uh, additional damage. For flavor, I would also like to say that like the lights on the bridge get a little bit brighter too, because I may have bypassed something I should not have. Probably. I look very, very angrily at Kaya. <laughs> Explain. Explain what? Why are our weapons overcharged? Oh, I just fine-tuned some systems. Everything's working normally. Don't worry, they'll fire just fine. My system is showing me bypasses. Oh, as there were some faulty relays. I uh, I bypassed them. Everything's fine. Don't worry. Meanwhile, over at the Nighthawk, what would you all I like wanna... to do? Oh, I want to spend two momentum to uh, keep going. Oh, all right, carry on. So you're back down to uh, four momentum. And uh, four, we're not three. Doing... Yeah, I think you're at four. Okay, we're at four. Uh, medium range, disruptor banks. Uh, no, you are currently at long range. The long range? Uh, would okay then. Ramming hmm. speed. Ramming speed would work though. Would that uh, boost our weapons though? I'm going to say the... that the ramming speed will get an additional challenge die or two as well. Okay. So yeah, I will give the order for ramming speed. All right. So uh, if you are using the direct action, this will happen without a increase in difficulty. Um, however, um, because it is a helm action, that does mean that Kiev has to go again, just so you know. Uh, and before we further commit to this, I do have to tell you that Hev would be rolling a Daring and Con, and the Dark Royal would assist with Engines Con. However, because it's at long range, it is a difficulty of five, just so you know. Oh. Yeah, so you can pick an entity at long range, but you're really supposed to use it when you're close. Because when you're close range, it's only a difficulty of two. Actually, wait a second. If you're at long, so close is one unit, medium is one unit, long is four. So you're it's actually a difficulty of four. Okay. She still has her moment, uh, her uh, determination as well. Yeah, if she wants to pop it. Does uh, does he have want to pop the determination to uh, get two successes? It feels very fitting. Sorry. <laughs> so yeah, Rancor, uh, just to sort of bring you up to speed. Um, so Determination is a, vers- uh, a versatile sort of uh, mechanic. Um, every character gets one to start off with, starts the session off with one. And in order to use it, you have to tap a value of your character. Uh, in this instance, I would say that Hiev's uh, big problems require big solutions would apply here. And there's a couple ways you can use determination, but the big one is to spend it before you roll, and you automatically gain two free successes. Gotcha. Um, big problems require big solutions. Yeah, I, I think that fits the bill. All righty. So, uh, you will start off with two free successes. Now, you still need four, uh, so you may wish to spend some momentum here. Everybody okay with that? 
I'd say spend one momentum for... Um, now it's two, because remember, oh, the yeah. uh, determination dice counts as one, so... It does. All right, so... three dice. Yep, so you're going to be rolling three dice, Rancor. Uh, the oh. task is going to be a daring and a con. And if someone could get the Dark Royals engines in con, please. Chief, do you want to get the uh, Dark Royal? Yes. And she does have an applicable focus. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. Hey, wow. The crits come in. All right. How many successes <laughs> is that? I see eight successes. Yeah, I yeah, see eight. So good. you're back capped at full momentum. Uh, oh, yeah. So uh, to give Rancor a little bit of screen time here, because I was like encouraging uh, newbies to the group. Uh, how would you best describe uh, your approach to the Nighthawk? Uh, you know, give us a little bit of flavor here. My approach to the Nighthawk? <laughs> yes. Well, the, the Dark Royals approach to the Nighthawk. Like, how is it coming in? Is it coming in at an angle? Is it is going straight on? Oof. Um, I would say, I would, like, slightly canted coming in. That way, I guess both prongs would hit. Would hit. Mm -hmm. uh, would you be aiming yeah. for any specific part of the Nighthawk for the prongs to hit, like the saucer section, the engines? Oh, good, good question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm seeing like stuff on Discord. It's distracting. <laughs> ignore ignore me because I mean nothing right now. Uh, I would say what what exactly is the I guess the anatomy of the ship, the Nighthawk? So it uh, it pretty much looks like it's token. Uh, it's a sort of circular torus that then has a smaller sort of torus or sphere in the middle of it, and then towards the back of the ship, it's sort of an oblong cylinder split into three. Well, the, those would be the engines, right, towards the back of the ship. And then the, I guess, the Taurus itself, what would that be considered? Uh, saucer section, bridge, things of that nature. Bridge. Um, I would say go for the connections. That would um, put, that would connect that to the main part of the ship. Very good. So the Dark Rail comes careening in. And since, uh, again, we want to get everybody new acquainted with it uh there should be if you go under the collection tab on upper right uh you should see under macros there should be three macros challenge dice system hit and techno babble uh what's relevant for you right now is the challenge dice macro and uh, what i would recommend is checking that little box that says in bar and then the box below the macros that says show macro quick bar and then all you have to do is push that button and it will ask you a question about how many challenge dice to roll. Oh, goodness. Where would I find this? Uh, so if you look at, uh, so you've got the roll 20 chat. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so you see that there's like little icons at the top of the window. Yes. You're going to look for the bulleted list. Got it. And then that's where the macro stuff is. Okay, and I am looking for which one again? Challenge dice. Challenge dice, and that would be under rollable too. No, never mind. Um, it's at the top of it, right? Correct. I click in bar. Yep, in bar, and then show macro quick bar. And then to the lower left of the map screen, there should be a challenge dice button. Yes. All right. So yeah, go ahead and click it. And uh, mm -hmm. let's see. So you have two plus the ramming ship scale. So that's six. You're overcharged. That means eight. eight. So I need you to roll me eight challenge dice, please. All righty. Don't we have floating momentum two since we went over cap? You do indeed. Uh, no, you are at cap precisely. Oh, I thought we were at two and then we had eight successes. Right, but it was a difficulty four. So. Right. Yeah, I can't math. <laughs> All right, so it's eight. Captain folks. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's eight. You're fine. All right. 
So this is going to be doing, before we spend any momentum, this is doing 10 damage. Now, one of the mechanics of challenge dice is you can spend one momentum to reroll as many dice as you wish. So it doesn't just have to be those two zeros. It could be the regular ones. Um, but what I would say here is that the effects are counting as two because you have a vicious one. And what a vicious one means is that for every effect, it counts as an additional one. So one plus effect means two, if that makes any sense. Okay. So it's up to you. Would you like to spend a momentum to do any re-rolling? Uh, you can also spend momentum to remove resistance from the Nighthawk. If I can offer my two cents to you. Yeah. Um, one for resistance, one for uh, four challenge dice re-roll. That's my, yes, that's my two cents. Uh, the, so the we we want the lower number in this. In the uh, for challenge list, you want to see high numbers. Oh, high numbers. Okay, so yes, one for each. Okay. If everybody's okay with spending momentum on that. So two momentum. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Spend. All right. So go ahead and roll uh, four more challenge dice for me. All right, now I actually have to do math. All right, so that is <laughs> 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. I see 13 overall. All right, so Nighthawk, I need you to take... Because she spent the one for penetration, so I need you to take 13 damage, which is reduced by your scale by three because it's two off so you take a total of 10 damage to your shields as the dark royal literally slams into the connecting part of your saucer section um <laughs> now uh this is important and this again this is meant to be a tutorial so this is a good uh, time to explain things um so uh rancor what happens here is because you scored five or more damage in a single attack uh, that is a very important thing when it comes to combat, is that five or more damage causes special things. Uh, for you, it means you can now roll on the system hit table. Uh, that should be a macro as well. Okay. Okay, I see it. And that one, I think you just push the button and it'll tell you what you hit. All right, a breach to weapons. All right, so... Uh, as the Dark Royal literally slams into the Nighthawk, uh, what happens is that uh, on the Nighthawk bridge, uh, the prerequisite amount of consoles and bulkheads explode in a shower of sparks and uh, small rocks that are standard in every Federation bulkhead. And uh, for the moment, when you start to sort of reel and take stock of what just happens, um, your weapons are disrupted, meaning you cannot make any attacks or any tasks that would involve or be assisted by the ship's weapon system until you perform the restore minor action. Ugh. So we go back to the Nighthawk. All of that has just happened. What is your response? An explosive opening. That I probably shouldn't have given to them. <laughs> they certainly aren't subtle with their tactics, sir. Uh, I mean, the captain... Uh said that he has unconventional thinking and i guess this is this is what he means by that but let's show him that we're not we we have some teeth of our own May I offer some, uh my findings from the because we didn't have the time to debrief from my findings on on board uh we have more <laughs> we have more power than they do uh and they're also vulnerable from the rear sir it, we are in full weapon arc from the forward and, and sides of the vessel but they only have one of their weapons targeting, like covering their rear, essentially. All right. Well, Lieutenant Commander Housing, your thoughts? We need to get the weapons up regardless. And then if need be, we can do out of game. I got quick to action, so we can do a double turn if need be. Gotcha. Well, I'm thinking of out of character. That double turn is definitely the way to go. Uh, in character right now we're gonna try to uh you know repair weapons regardless and try to move out of the way okay well the good news is is that pretty much anyone could do the restore minor action you just tell me you're doing it mm -hmm. 
well, we're going to go, uh, we're doing it. And we're, but the actual action is we're going to try to move the Nighthawks in position as quickly as possible to see if we could uh, flank the Dark Royal. Okay. Uh, I would say that that is simply going to be a maneuver. Uh, you can move anywhere within medium range, so anywhere within six hexes. What uh, was that, Alec? Going into the, oh, how do you feel about going into the asteroid field? I, I accept it as long as long as we're able to maneuver there, obviously without uh, taking additional damage. Yeah, that I would say fine. you could get over here, no problem. Yeah, okay. Provide us a little bit of cover. So I will say that there is still going to be a role associated with it because you could gain momentum for yourselves, and I want to be fair here. Mm -hmm. So I need the Helm Officer of the Nighthawk to roll me a control and a con, please. And I need the Nighthawk to assist them with an engine's con. Because you are flying into the asteroid field, I'm going to spend my own threat to raise this to a difficulty of two. And if you do engine. not succeed, you will take some challenge dice worth of damage. I see your increase in challenge, but I, I counter with my push the limits talent. So when a con challenge is increased for environmental uh, or any damage, I reduce the difficulty by one. All right. So it's a grand total of difficulty one. Twenty. Uh, helm operations is my focus. Mm hmm. Very nice. You get one momentum back. And yeah, go ahead and move yourself where, where you would like to be in the asteroid field. All right. And that is your helm action. Uh, you are quick to actioning. Oh, yes, we are. Okay. Who's going next? I was thinking you had something in mind, right? Or um, you just want to hit him? Got it. We're... Yeah, we're at close range, so we're going to have to... Photons won't be the way to go, but phasers, unless you want to use photons at a, what is it, a disadvantage. Well, so <sighs> phasers are meant for medium range, so using them at oh, close yeah. range also has a difficulty increase. Got it. But yeah, oh, photons hearing. would definitely not be the way to go because they're meant for long, so it would be a two difficulty increase. Yeah, so we're definitely just going to go with uh, our phaser right here. So, uh, Helsing, if you're doing the attack, it's a control security for you. The Nighthawk will assist you with a weapon security. The difficulty is a three at the moment. I'm going to use uh, one of our mo newly found momentum for another die. Okay. I see two successes. And the ship was... Weapon security. Weapon security. I'll go ahead and take shift. All right. Thank you much. Unfortunately, unless you want to spend determination to reroll your 1-0, you are going to miss them completely. Can yeah, I, let's uh, go ahead and... Can I actually uh, just... First? Well, commit my special action as the CO. Can I just spend a point of my determination to give him one? Uh, I would say you can do that, yes. All right. Well, I'll go ahead and take that hit for you. All righty. I got this. In this case, I'm. It's a narr it, narratively, it's personal pride against that other captain. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I gave him this big honking hit. I'm. I'm determined to win. <laughs> okay. All right. So yeah, go ahead and reroll as many dice as you want. Doesn't have to be just that zero. So, control, security, doesn't have to be the zero, but that's all it's going to be. Okay. One success. You have the three successes you need. Go ahead and roll me some damage. Okay, and what was the actual die roll? Because I didn't click my focus, so it might be one more. Is that a three that was rolled? Uh, yes, a three was rolled. So it should actually, it would actually be a crit then. All right, so four successes, which means you get that momentum right back. Roger. So for the Nighthawk, your phaser arrays are going to be seven challenge dice. Wow, that is quite a lot of challenge dice. Yes, and we got phasers. <laughs> All right. Now, would you like to spend, uh, you do have versatile two. 
So what would you like to spend your two free momentum on? Can uh, zoom in. Definitely lower. Res Let's see the penetration. Okay. Do that one twice. Do that one twice. Okay. So I mean, they got armor. So yep. So the phaser arrays of the Nighthawk answer in kind, striking the Dark Royal across the brow. So Dark Royal, you are going to take eight damage minus two because you still have a blade of armor, and they only reduced it by four. So. You take a grand total of six damage to your polarized plating, which means a breach for you as well. So, Helsing, if you want to go ahead and hit that system hit. Can we also, um, does the overcharge factor into our uh, plating at all? Uh, unfortunately, no. It is only offensive. Okay. Sensors. All right. So, same sort of thing. Uh, bridge sparks, things of that nature. Uh, when sensors are impacted uh, until someone performs the restore minor action... Uh, the sensors cannot be used, and the attacks made by the ship increase in difficulty by one. But again, restore minor action is, you just tell me you're doing it, and it happens. Okay. So yeah, it is now the Dark Royals' turn again. Uh, you have a tactical action and a sensor operation action remaining. Oh, uh, I will say, I don't know if I can say, but um, do the restore and then scan for weakness. Okay. That gives our lovely uh, liaison something to do. Yeah, we're picking on her today, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> All right, uh, so Rancor, uh, what you're going to be doing for a scan for weakness is a control and a science. All right. And uh, the difficulty here is a one. And if someone could get the Dark Royals sensors and security, please. I got it. Two dice. Mm hmm. Fire. And because it's sensors, I have. You a have a focus, focus right? yeah. Yes. All right. So you get, sure. let's see, it was a difficulty one. So you have three momentum. Now, what I would say is because you have rolled a complication here, uh, if you give me two of the momentum you just got, we will cancel out that complication. I'm good with that. All righty. All right. So you go up by one momentum, and yes, you have scanned a, uh, a weakness in the Nighthawk, and you think that based on your impact, that if you were to fire in the same area or the same general area you could potentially cause an actual breach. Now, I want to be very clear here. An actual breach. Not a simulated breach. An actual breach. Let's not. <laughs> but let's tell them we could do that. But that is, uh, that is the Dark Royals' turn. We go back to the Nighthawk. One thing. Am I able to do the two momentum spend to go again? Um, I would say no, because you can only do that once per round. Okay. All right, so Nighthawk, you have a command action and your own sensor operation. Um, let's see here. Well, personally, to, my, to the best of my knowledge, we still kind of got them right where we want them. Um, if we want to, since we're already in the asteroid field, it's going to be a little bit more difficult for them to, uh, hit us regardless mm -hmm. um, and so i'm content in using our sensor action using our advanced sensors to see if we could uh, gleam any more additional information but regardless of which i'm still just going to keep firing upon them okay so what are you doing exactly then we could cloak or is that tactical is that a, a tactical action it is a tactical action yes okay all right okay now, I mean, because you still have command, uh, he could basically order someone to do something that has already been done, and he can assist with his command skill. Um, but it is still at an increased difficulty if it has been done already. I apologize. I people over. Yeah, no, I'm still staying, staying put. Mm -hmm. uh, we're firing on them. I'm ordering uh, Helsing to continue firing on the Dark Royal. Okay. So that's going to be another right. weapons security or control security difficulty of 
four now. Uh, the Dark Royal, or not the Dark Royal, the Nightwing, or Nighthawk. I'm getting my names mixed up. The Nighthawk will assist with a weapon security. Um, Helsing, or not Helsing, uh, Sengral, you're assisting with a command and presence. And I need to see four successes here. Right, I'll uh, go ahead and burn a momentum. All right, we have one already on the board. Coming up. I got the ship. It was a zero. Oop. Oh. oh, you did? Yep. yep. So right two more die from I mean, Helsing no, I, there. I didn't at all. No. If I rolled the... No, so we only got three hits total. Yeah. Ship. Alec rolled the ship. We had a miss. I had Oh, two. I see your roll now. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so unfortunately, uh, you fire again with your phasers, and you miss completely. Um, I'm going to burn my determination. Okay. Oh, well, hold on. One moment. I kind of, unfortunately, Discord skipped out on me a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, are, we counting, are we counting my advisor talent here to re-roll uh, one of these zeros? Uh, we are, yes. Okay, never mind then. Continue. All right, so... Burn that, and that's re-rolling the two zeros. Okay. Wow. Oh, yeah, wow. so even with the re-roll, unfortunately, the phasers just streak past the Dark Royal, not impacting at all. Which means it's now the Dark Royal's turn, and you only have tactical remaining. So the weakness was what I'm guessing weapons, or the where we hit roughly. Where you hit roughly, which, based on how starship combat works, it's enough that you could thrust her and spin yourself around if need be. Okay. I'm just gonna look to the master at arms. So like, railgun. Let's look at her engines. All right. So, Soup, uh, this is going to be, because the railgun is considered to be a torpedo weapon, this is going to be a difficulty of three, and uh, it is going to be a, wep or a control security on your part and a weapon security on the part of the Dark Royal. I'll get the ship for this one. Okay. All right. Should I burn some momentum on this? I would recommend yeah. it. How much do you want me to burn? Three. Get yourself four dice. And would I have a focus for this? You would. Should, or, you you should yeah, have should one. Tactical systems. All right, so that's already four successes on the board. Let's see what the Dark Royal gives you. Oh, wow. That is a total of Nine. six successes, which means you get three momentum. And, uh, yeah, go ahead and roll me seven. No, because you still have overcharged weapons. Go ahead and give me a nine challenge die. Yes. The overcharge is until the end of this round. Uh, so it goes away after the end of this round. Go master at arms. Nine Wait, challenge dice, uh, please. Yeah, and I was pulling up the challenge dice thing because I forgot to. All right, so that is currently. I have. Let's see. Cautious security. Well, that only applies for the zeros. D20. That doesn't apply oh. for uh, the challenge dice. But you could spend one momentum to re-roll those four zeros. Should I? Yeah, let's do it. Burning one, and let's go. We are the Cornets. We're in it to win it. Pitter patter, let's get at her. Oh! All right. So let, let's do some math here, unfortunately. So that's... Uh, 
2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 damage. Pen, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yeah, I think you guys got it. Like, that's that's enough not only to take care of the shields, but you take care of the shields twice over. So, Soup, since you... I'm going to say that's the end of combat, because Soup, I'm going to let you describe how the Dark Royal fires off its railgun. Go, go ahead and give us some flavor here. The Dark Royal's railgun turns ominously to the ship as it is charging up for the shot. And... Kragith just simply hits the fire button and watches an almost ship-rocking shot as it's fired straight into the Nighthawk. All right. And mm. uh, because I did warn you, I need you to roll me three system hits, please. Oh, dear. I now have to roll. So, Mind okay, you, you're I was aiming to glance it. All right. So, so it would fully destroy everything. Right. So, Nighthawk, good news, bad news. Bad news, obviously, that uh, you sort of just got one shot it out of the water. But the good news is that uh, they thankfully avoided hitting your previous breach. So, all the damage is simulated. The only damage is to your pride. Ouch. <laughs> wow. First officer. Uh, yes, Captain. Please be so kind to show me the face of the captain of the Nighthawk. Uh, one moment, sir. And yeah, Helsing, or not Helsing, uh, Singral, do you answer the hail? I do, okay. but I'm not smiling. <laughs> Give him the signal for international relations. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yeah, wow. he appears on screen. Captain? Captain. Your crew did it, a fine job. I appreciate the compliment. So did yours. More, more than we expected and anticipated, but regardless of which, I mean, you stuck true, and that was unexpected. Oh, after all, the Carnets are more adept to battle. After all, you are explorers. And I do hope that this can be used as a method for teaching. I mean, if you ever want to continue to discuss battle plans, or you want to have a round two, I'd be happy to oblige you. You could have a round two at some point in the future. I'm sure the crew would be up for another victory. But wow. I just... I do <laughs> appreciate this. As do I. I speak on behalf of the entire Federation, where I say this has been most helpful for intelligence specific. In any case. And actually, I mean, before you say the next thing, uh, he have interrupts you both and says, oh, Captain, I am getting a hail from Cerberus Station, so I put it through. Right on. All right. And appearing sort of on a split screen on the other side of uh, Sengral is a uh, Cation captain. It is Captain Hamasi, and she says, All right, boys, do I need to send out a tug for one of you? Because uh, what I just saw, goddamn. That won't be necessary, Captain. All the damage is simulated. All of it. <laughs> if you say so, Captain, I think we both know what liquor stores are being broken out tonight. Oh, and uh, Captain Dominus, welcome to the car or the uh, Lasai Expanse. Pleasure to be here. Hmm. Hamasi out. And now you may continue, Sengral. Captain Sengral. Yes? I would like for you to be aboard my ship. I have something I wish to discuss. I'll be there momentarily. The exercise, even now, is still ongoing. My doctor still has to, and the rest of my crew still has to deal with this uh, simulated battle, this battle damage that you uh, managed to inflict upon us. So as soon as we take care of all of that, I'll be there momentarily. I look forward. Single out. And transmission. After immediately the uh, view screen cuts out, mm -hmm. Sangral is thinking to my head, 
oh, okay, well, these people, now these people over at Cerberus are having a laugh here. They finally got their stuff together just to call me for this? Wow. <laughs> That's the old, okay, well, they don't read any other communiques, but they got time for this today. That's funny. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, it did kind of happen on their their front porch. You know, they oh, had prime ring seat, uh, ring tickets to it. Oh, they did. I'm just so glad they have the they pick and choose their 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 time so well. Oh, I love. At it. least something's finally starting to go right over there. <laughs> You're not wrong. Even if it is a sense of humor, <laughs> which I find sorely lacking. <laughs> Look at those trees. Oh, so much salt. All right, so we're going to skip ahead a little bit. Uh, Dominus, uh, you meet with Singral. Where did I put Singral? All right. So, yeah, uh, you arrive outside his ready room, Singral. Of course, you are escorted either by uh, Kragath or one of his security officers. Come on, Captain. Well, Captain, well, definitely. I'll step in. So what can I do for you? Well, I just wanted to again, again say thank you for the simulation. It was quite interesting. I am glad it was a simulation. A rail gun round through a ship. That's not easy to fix. Especially towards the engines. But the other thing I wanted to address was... Well, I already planned on doing this. But... Your little escapades into our computer files. I'm a changeling. As you know, dead or aware. And you probably have some questions. I do. But I'll leave them up for you to tell me. Well, I'll cut right to the chase then. I am one of the, what they call the 100. But I don't give two shits about the Founders, or the Great Link. I was raised, and brought up and taught to be a Cornet, and I am a Cornet, although a little bit different. When the regrettable Dominion War happened, and our aid was declined, the Dominion vessel was sent out to, I don't know, Make contact with me, bring me back into the fold. That vessel never returned home, and the Dominion stayed cleared of the Cornets for one simple reason. They sent a message back with a broken Vorta. Do not cross the border. Do not attempt to reclaim me. They told me a changeling cannot harm another changeling. I can't have any programming within my mind preventing me from doing my job. So I destroyed the ship that that changeling was said to be on. I don't know if one was, or wasn't. But it sent them a message to not mess with me. I am loyal to the Cornets. Well, Captain, regardless of the damage that may actually happen outside there in space, you've put me in a more precarious position otherwise, and I hope you realize this. And at this point in time, although I'd love to take your word for it, Unfortunately, this does change things. It does, and the Cornets would have had to address this sooner or later. They wanted to do it in some pony show get-up. I decided against that. Well, Captain, I must... Unfortunately, I, considering the information that you've given me, I must reevaluate the situation. And I'll let you know right now, even though it might necessarily seem possibly antisocial and probably backwards to what we're trying to discuss here right now, for, you know, the sake of our personal relationship, I'll let you know up front right now that the Dark Royal is going to have in in more increased scrutiny out here with your actions in the Expanse. I'll still allow you autonomy, and you could still have the ability to feel free to take care of your missions as you see fit. But I'll let you know. Don't be surprised if you see additional Starfleet vessels to and from where you're going. Wouldn't have it any other way. 
the fears that the Vorta had told me about the persecution of the other founders, the solids, as they called them, would always hate Changeling. I never found out with the Cornets. They accepted me. And they made me better. But I look forward to proving that I am an asset, not just to the Cornets, but to the Federation. And that I am sincere in my attempts to make this alliance and the possible joining of the Cornets to the Federation possible. After he says that line, I'd actually like to attempt to read him. Obviously not with my empathic abilities, but just as a presence command role. Okay. I mean, he, I would say it's up to Shizno whether or not it's really opposed. No, it's not opposed. He's genuine in what he believes. Well, then I'll go ahead and take it. Still under intense scrutiny, but... <laughs> in any case, Captain Dominus, when you get the time, I'd like to advise you, if you have any further information on the Dominion or the Changelings that you'd like to share with Starfleet, I'd like you to voluntarily... I'd like you to volunteer your services to uh, for a debriefing at Deep Space 15. Can certainly accommodate that, but I haven't had any contact with them during the since that one incident during the war. They stayed cleared. Well, I guess it's time for us to change that. I'll make note of that right away, and if possible, and if time allows it, the Nighthawk will escort you. Well, the Dark Royal can escort me to the base, unless you feel like I'm some sort of threat. Oh no, not at all. I just feel to say that with the changing nature of the expanse that I want to make sure that all, all my I's are dotted and all my T's are crossed, as it, are, as it were. You do know some human sayings. Well, occasionally. Like, the ship is quite mixed. I had to study a lot about human culture because they are the primary founders of the Federation. Also Vulcan and a few others. It's an interesting read. I'll do what I can, make sure that everything is on the up and up, as long as I have clearance from the Imperium. Well, in any case, I don't think there's anything further to discuss. Well, I, I have to get back to my ship. I bid you good day, Captain. Good but day. I, want, I want to make sure that hopefully this is the last time I come here under precarious circumstances. Nothing but precarious about this. We'll see. And I'll just take my leave. Yeah, and the uh, the final shot of today's session is of the doors closing and maybe Dominus sort of chuckling to himself. Uh, but yeah, that's where we're going to end the session. Uh, so players, stick around for just a little bit longer. But anyone watching on Twitch, YouTube, etc. Uh, hopefully you found this uh, first little taste of the Dark Royal crew to be fun. Um, they are on a every other week schedule, which means the next session for the Dark Royal is going to be November 3rd, uh, schedules willing. Uh, but yeah, this is where I'm going to cut the stream, so Twitch, YouTube, etc. See you later.